Good morning, and uh, welcome to the devotional for Tuesday morning. I'm Aubrietta Jones. I'm one of the pastors of the First United Methodist Church of Maumelle, and I'm glad to get to share the word with you today. I'm going to give people a few minutes to get online and uh, to be able to uh, to uh, have this time. And as I do that, I'm going to share a few announcements. Good morning, Betty. Glad that you could join us today. Um, as, uh, as we share a few announcements, I'm going to let you know that I'm really excited about our opportunities for Ash Wednesday this, uh, this time. And uh, what I want to share with you is that we are going to have the opportunity, we've gotten permission from the owners of the building to offer ashes in the early morning at the location of the old neighborhood Walmart in the middle of town. Uh, maybe we'll use their drive through We may use the side of their parking lot. We haven't quite decided yet, but I did want to let you know that, that if you are an early morning traveler, if you need to get out and about early in the morning on Wednesday, February 17th, well, you will have the opportunity because we will uh, have those ashes there right in the middle of town uh, to offer you through the window. We're going to have a live stream service in the evening and we're going to have also ashes in the late afternoon at the church as well so that that'll give you several opportunities but i'm excited about that chance to offer the ashes in the middle of town we do have some friends whose uh, churches are not going to be offering those kinds of opportunities that may come from churches that observe ash wednesday their congregation may be out of town and maybe this is something they miss quite a bit uh, you know, year after year this is something we can do for people in the community who would like to receive their ashes on Ash Wednesday and begin the season of Lent in that way and I'm very excited about it so let's uh, as as uh, people are starting to get on our, our uh, zoom or our uh, live this morning I see Sheila and Faye good morning ladies glad you're with us I'm gonna go ahead and share with you um, we've concluded this past week our series called wholesome where we're talking about inviting God into every aspect of life and now we are getting ready for a new series called canceled um, if you're not familiar with that phrase um, there is a there is a way that people look at uh, particularly celebrities but even one another and they get angry and disgusted about certain things and they decide to ignore them and to blackball them and that's what it means for somebody to be canceled and what we're going to be talking about in church is that instead of trying to cancel other people and cancel them because they're not appropriate cancel them because they believe the wrong things cancel them because they don't live up to our expectations uh, we need to cancel the sin within ourselves. We need to look at our faults and our failings and our weaknesses and give God the chance to heal us of those things and to free us of those things. We need to change the world by starting with us instead of trying to change the world by ostracizing the people around us so that we can offer an authentic witness to people. We can offer uh, friendship and encouragement to people and we can actually help people and facilitate change and so we're going to be keeping that in mind as we go to the next series there's something big that's been going on behind the scenes that i don't know if you all know and i see b watson is on there good morning b um uh, there's some things going on behind the scenes here in these sermon series that you may not know we're spending basically the entire spring up through easter in the gospel of luke and i'm excited about that too i like to focus on a book of the Bible for a long period of time and we're covering different themes but the Gospel of Luke is where we're going to be living for a little while and we've basically been there since the beginning of the year as well we've hopped around a little bit we haven't gone through it necessarily in a chronological way but we're looking at Luke for a long time so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what the Gospel of Luke really is all about why we have the Gospel of Luke we have four Gospels in the Bible this one gospel also connects to the book of Acts because it's the same author, the same faith traditions, uh, same emphasis and so forth. Uh, but why do we have uh, this gospel? And uh, I was going to read to you today, our scripture is Luke chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. And this is an older translation, it's the RSV translation. Hear what it says. Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things which have been accomplished among us 
just as they were delivered to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the truth concerning the things of which you have been informed. And so we learn a lot about this gospel as we read this paragraph. One thing we learn is that this gospel um, is, uh, it is one that is written after several other gospels have been written. It says, um, it says that many others have undertaken to compile a narrative. A lot of other people had already written a gospel by then. Some of those gospels turned out to be spiritually useful and uplifting and churches passed them around and they became scripture. They were acknowledged as being inspired by God in a special way. Some of those other gospels were more like uh, devotional material, maybe useful for their time, not, um, not necessarily useful in the same way that scripture is, not that same level of power and transformation. And so, but a lot of people had written gospels by the time this gospel was written. <clears throat> it's written to Theophilus, which really means lover of God. And it may have been an actual person, or that may have been kind of a construct, uh, a, a literary construct to say uh, that it was written. It makes it feel personal, but it, it may not have actually been to a person named Theophilus. It might have been, but it's possible that he, he put that in because it, it communicates the message that he is writing to people who are already believers. And he wants to strengthen their faith. He wants them to know the truth concerning the things of what they've been informed about. Okay? He wants them to know the truth concerning the things they've been informed about. They've already heard the gospel message. They're interested enough to read it. He calls them a lover of God, excellent Theophilus, lover of God. And he wants to simply build them up in their faith is really what this is about. This is a witness to people who are already Christians. And um, so that's, a, that's an interesting point about this gospel. It's also, uh, <clears throat> it's also um, there, there are certain emphases that Luke uh, makes that, that the other gospels do not offer as much of. All the Gospels teach basically the same things, but some emphasize some pieces more than others, and some explain some things in a different way. And so in the Gospel of Luke, what we find is that prayer at key moments is very, very important. It's emphasized. Obviously, all the Gospel authors believed in prayer, but Luke really talks about prayer more. He refers to prayer more. Uh, the Gospel of Luke mentions the word prayer 22 times and the gospel of acts mentions the word prayer uh, uh, 25 times and uh, by comparison the gospel of matthew which is slightly longer than the gospel of luke mentions prayer 17 times um, the gospel of luke starts essentially with prayer after this introduction uh, it talks about uh, zechariah who's the father of john the baptist going into the the Holy of Holies, the, the high holy place so that he can pray. It is his turn to pray. And the, the book of Acts, which is also written by this same author, uh, begins with the uh, apostles, the disciples praying. And so prayer is a really central role in the Gospel of Luke, and it's mentioned many times. Um, also, the idea that God wants to uh, help the person who is humble and lift them up and he will cast down the proud. And that's a huge theme in the Gospel of Luke. And the humble person is often poor, but it may not be a poor person. Uh, for example, in Luke chapter five, we see that Jesus visits the tax collector. He says, I must do this. I must go to your house today. And so he visits the tax collectors and tax collectors were wealthy and deeply dishonest. Uh, but this tax collector was willing to humble himself and come to Jesus. And so we have to, we have to know that, that uh, that what Luke prizes and what Luke is telling us Jesus prizes are humble hearts, uh, not necessarily an origin story that, that automatically evokes compassion, although certainly Jesus really had a great deal of compassion for the downtrodden and the poor, but people who are humble enough that they were willing to change. And that's really what 
uh, what Luke emphasizes, he shows many examples of Jesus doing that kind of thing. Um, another thing in the Gospel of Luke is that um, there are several references that tell us that wealth can choke out the gospel in our lives, uh, that uh, wealth is dangerous almost. He, this is clear in Luke and it's clear in Acts, uh, so that, um, so that uh, Luke seems to almost have a fear of loving possessions too much. And that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing to remember and to consider uh, that, uh, that, that uh, if we do not have a right relationship with our possessions, we may find out that we have worshiped our possessions instead of worshiping our Father in heaven. And that sometimes our faith calls us to be generous and to give up things and to give things. And if we don't live into that, uh, then our faith is less vibrant and our faith is, is less alive. And so uh, that, that's a powerful theme in the Gospel of Luke. And I just wanted to mention those kinds of themes to you uh, because <clears throat> I think it's important for us to know and to see kind of the overall message of Luke. We'll be talking about these things as we continue to walk through Luke. We'll try to examine themes and so forth. But the thing that is powerful to me today in the scripture I read, okay? In the scripture I read, it's powerful me today to me today to think about that everybody else had written an account and there was already a lot of gospels floating around, but Luke, he just thought it seemed good to write this account. Luke thought it seemed good uh, to, to write this account because he'd been following closely, because his faith, he was pretty devoted and dedicated and, and because it was a big part of his life, he just wanted to write it down. Um, Luke is not mentioned by name in this gospel um, in the way that, um, you know, that, uh, that would tell us, it's not that he signed it or anything like that, but at the same time, he, he is the one that ancient sources tell us wrote this gospel, and that's how we know it's from him. And then the book of Acts, uh, halfway through, uh, the, the, the author starts saying we, and it's clear that that's when Luke joined the journey. After, after Jesus' life and death and resurrection, Luke joined the early church. He was a member of the early church like you and I. He was not a, a firsthand eye, uh, he was not an eyewitness. To the physical ministry of Jesus in the world. So his testimony is really valuable to me and speaks to me in a special way because he's like me. He is like a, a later Christian, somebody that was not an eyewitness and yet his faith is as vibrant and powerful to him as it would have been if he had walked directly with Jesus in the flesh in his life journey. And so I love thinking about that. Um, and I love that he wanted to write this down. Now, I want to challenge you all at some point to take a time and write a letter about your faith. Um, write a letter about your, your faith in God. Write a letter that indicates things that he's done in your life. Uh, write a letter about which, which Bible stories speak to you the most. Write something like that and give it to your family and to your friends. I want to encourage you to do that. And the reason I suggest that is because that Luke's faith, even though he hadn't met Jesus in the flesh and followed him in his earthly ministry as a, one of the 12 disciples, Luke's faith is vibrant and vital enough that it brings many to faith. And it's a big theme in the Gospel of Luke and also in the book of Acts to see people coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Luke gets to witness all of that. Luke believes in that. He, it's moving to him and meaningful to him enough that he really emphasizes that aspect of history, um, that, that aspect of Jesus' ministry. And um, Luke's faith is that powerful. Your faith is powerful to convince others and to encourage faith in others who are already Christians. Your faith has that kind of power. You're somebody that God has brought through cancer you're somebody that God has brought through a difficult situation in a marriage. You're somebody that God has brought through a difficult divorce. You're someone who has uh, come through fears and scares and, and, and has seen hopes and dreams come true and has seen hopes and dreams not come true. And God has brought you through all of it. And that is a vital, vibrant, important story. And I want to encourage you to do that. 
Um, it doesn't have to be long if you're not somebody that uh, considers yourself a great writer or you could make a video, but you, you could be somebody who talks about how God gets you through each day in a letter. I know sometimes some of us are not comfortable talking out loud about our faith with something we kind of have to work our way up to. Why not write a letter to whoever you want to write it to and tell them uh, when you came to faith in Jesus, if you remember that moment, tell them when you came to faith in Jesus. Uh, tell them what you believe Jesus does for you. You believe Jesus died for your sins and that you're forgiven. It doesn't have to be fancy language. Tell them that you believe it. That matters. Tell them you believe it. Um, tell them uh, the times that God has, uh, has gotten you through that have been hard. Tell them the times that you know God has blessed you and that, it, that God has given you what you need to get through those times. Uh, tell them what, you, what, what your faith means to you. In your own words, um, offer them an orderly account to some degree of what God has done in your life and uh, help them to, to have that kind of encouragement from your witness. I, I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll do that. And those kinds of letters can really be a keepsake for family and for friends. Uh, I know it would take a big leap of faith or a big, uh, big moment of opening up in a vulnerable way to do that, but I hope that you do. I really hope you do, and I want to hear from you if you do that. Um, and that's something that I'm working on doing right now. And um, obviously, I mean, I preach every Sunday and so forth, but I'm going to write a little bit more personal letter for for my children and and for my family uh, to have uh, because I think that is important and it matters. That's my witness. And you too have a witness of who God is and what God has done in your life. So I hope you will write a letter about what your faith means to you. Write a letter about how God has moved in your life and make that letter a keepsake for your friends and your family to encourage them in their faith and to help them remember that uh, God is still alive and active in the world and that he's been alive and active in your life and you are a witness to that. I hope you will. Um, so that's my challenge for you today to follow in Luke's footsteps and write an account of what God has done. And, uh, um, and, and so just be thinking about that. Please be praying about that. I encourage you to do it. I see others have joined. Uh, I saw Betty on there a minute ago. Hi, Linda. And uh, others are joining in and Twyla's in here. And so uh, thank y'all for joining today. We're going to go ahead and do our prayer concerns. Good morning, Mike. I see Mike's on there now. So, um, <clears throat> I'm glad that y'all are with us today. Um, let's go ahead and, and go to God in prayer. And we certainly want to pray for um, everybody that is suffering and struggling with illnesses and people who are waiting for big test results and things like that. We want to pray for them. Uh, we want to continue to pray for, uh, for our church and, and uh, pray for the great ministries that we get to share together. And... Uh, if you have other prayer concerns, please do list them in the comments and we'll be looking at those throughout the week. I may not be able to see them on the screen while we're praying, but I can look back during the week. Uh, you're welcome to also private message me if there's something that may not belong in those comments or send me an email or call me um, and uh, I'll, I'll keep those prayers uh, close to my heart. And uh, I want to let you know that our previous associate pastor, Andrew Suit is uh, going to be undergoing surgery. He put on Facebook, so it's a public thing, uh, he put on Facebook that he is going to undergo uh, a weight loss type surgery. And uh, so I would encourage you to pray for Andrew. Uh, I believe it's next week that he's gonna be doing that. So please do pray for Andrew and we will, uh, we will remember him and uh, continue to remember all of, our, all of our church family and church friends uh, that are in need of love and support. Um, and uh, um, let's, uh, let's go to God in prayer. And if you have specific prayer concerns, I want to encourage you to put them in your hands and raise them up. Do that in your, in your mind. Kind of think about them being in your hands and raise them up to God. Let's pray. God, I thank you and praise you for your love. Thank you, God, for the people that are joining in prayer this morning. Prayer is important, God. You, you teach us that prayer is, uh, prayer is the essence of our relationship with you. Prayer is everything. Prayer is the way that you use us and partner with us to heal the world. And so God, prayer is important in ways we can't even understand and fathom. And we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you for the gift of being able to come to you in prayer. And we lift up the world to you in prayer at this time. Lord, we pray that you would be with each 
member of our church family and each member of our community, each one that is with us this morning who might be facing struggles. We pray, God, uh, and lift up anyone in our lives that uh, has big and difficult decisions to make, anyone in our life that feels lo unloved and alone, anyone that we know who is uh, waiting uh, for medical tests or who is battling significant illness, we lift them all up to you, God. We pray, God, that you would be that great physician. We pray that you would be that nearest and dearest friend. We pray, God, that you would lead us and guide us to offer love and support to others along the way and that your wisdom would be the discernment of your people, that your wisdom would live within all of us. Um, God, we, we thank you for our church. We thank you, God, for a place to worship and to praise you. We thank you, God, uh, that we get to do that wherever we are because of the gift of uh, online communication. It's been a strange time, God, and, and, and we miss being together. We're going to be together again soon, uh, but we pray, God, that you would help us to, to, um, to remember to worship you and to think about and give thanks for the worshiping community that worships you wherever we are. Um, Lord, uh, we, we lift up to you uh, the, the gift of life itself. Life is sacred. We lift up to you the gift of life in great thanksgiving, and we pray to you, God, for those little souls that will never be born. Uh, we pray to you, God, for uh, the, the joy of new life coming into the world, and, and we lift up, God, uh, the, the sanctity and the preciousness of human life, and we pray, God, that you would help us find ways to support and bless the world in such a way that it would foster life. Uh, little lives coming into the world, the lives of the unborn, the lives of those on death row. Help us, God, to help us, God, to be people that foster and and uh, support the the holiness of each life and the sacredness of each life. Uh, God, we we thank you for this time of of uh, of communing with you. We thank you, God, for your word. We ask, oh God, that your word would guide our lives each and every day. Help us, God, to be people who shine your kingdom wherever we go. Help us, God, to be people who live out of grace and truth. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all so much for being a part. And um, uh, I see Karen has joined us. Good morning, Karen. There's others I know I have missed, and I appreciate you all joining us uh, in prayer. And we pray, Lord, that we, we, we continue to pray for one another, and we're going to pray uh, to the Lord for anything that is listed in the comments. If you just want to put those things in there, I'll be looking back to see. And uh, uh, thank you all for joining us, and we will see you again soon. Take care.